I'm Ted's daughter, Nancy McClure, and on behalf of Ruth and the rest of our family, thanks to all of you for being here today to honor my dad. And thank you, Rob, for that tribute. It's just wonderful. Do you know, I was thinking, Rob, that I think it's actually Ted who's having the last laugh having two lawyers, which I'm the best. <laughs>
Even today, there's a stigma around mental illness, but this was back in the 1980s when no one was talking much about it. In the face of great personal and professional risk, he became an outspoken advocate. He spoke publicly about his personal story and was widely quoted in the Wall Street Journal and other publications. He put his money where his mouth was and donated heavily to mental health causes, including endowing a chair in psychiatry at the University of Minnesota. He worked tirelessly with the church, helping pastors recognize depression and those seeking counseling so they could get help getting them proper medical care. And he was always there to step in and help fellow sufferers and their families. In recent days, I've heard many stories from folks who feel extremely indebted to Tedler for the support he provided. It would have been easier not to speak out, but once Ted knew there was hope, he couldn't stop himself. And I have great admiration for the courage he showed in standing up for what he believed in. Memories from the recent past. Most of you know that Ted suffered from dementia over the past few years. Our mom's goal was to care for him at home, and she did all she could to make that happen. Now, because it's Ted we're talking about, I feel entitled to digress at least once today. <laughs> and I'm going to do it here to say something that needs to be said. Mom, you are a saint. I doubt you had any idea the journey you would take when 63 years ago you vowed for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health. And all of us, and Dad too, owe you our thanks for your love, support, and steady hand. Anyway, 14 months ago, it became clear that the goal of keeping Ted at home was just not possible. The dementia produced delusions that came at all hours of the day and night, and when Mom finally admitted that she was getting, oh, as much sleep as a new baby, we knew it was time. We were extremely fortunate to be able to move Ted to Breck Homes, where care is focused on elders with severe memory loss. Jenny Morgan and the staff at Breck gave Ted the best care we could have possibly hoped for in his final months. While his memory of people faded, old worries lingered. If he was up all night needing to check buildings to make sure the air compressors were running, if it was raining and he needed to check for leaks or if he thought the pipes were broken, they just went there with him. Other days, it seemed like he thought he was running the place, and that was fine too. On behalf of my mom, brothers, and sisters, we want to say a very public thank you to everyone from Breck. You met Ted where he was at, unconditionally and without judgment. And I think there's a lesson for all of us in that. As the dementia continued to take its toll both mentally and physically, and the focus turned to hospice care, we found ourselves in the loving arms of Jenny and the staff. While we took turns keeping a family member nearby, we watched in awe as staff after staff came in to say their touching goodbyes. They were all going to miss their adventures with Ted. In his final hour, Walt and I happened to be there, and while Jenny went off to wake Ruth, who was sleeping downstairs, my mind raced back over the almost 60 years I've known my dad, and landed on a memory from the early days at 2101 that my siblings and I had been reminiscing about. Dad would come home at the end of the day, exhausted from building a business, providing for his family, helping someone who <coughs> were doing whatever else he thought he could do to make the world a better place. The six of us were usually swinging from the chandeliers. <laughs> He'd go in the living room, lie down on the couch to take a little nap, and holler out for us to pipe down. Then he'd call for someone, any one of us would do. Mary, Nancy, Jim, Martha, Paul, Dave. Come in here, put on a record and give me a forehead rub, he would say. And so, as a favorite record playing, I rubbed his forehead. You've made the world a better place, Dad. You put every ounce of your heart and soul into it, and it's fair that you're tired. How comforting are the words of Jesus. Come to me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's time to rest now. It's finally time to rest.